Obviously, you made a lot of noise uh, back in 2014 when you said that you were one of the top five players in the world or strided to be one of the top five players in the world. Um, do you still feel that way? Do you still feel that you're one of the top five players in golf? I feel like if I continue doing what I'm doing that, uh, you know, I definitely can get to that, that point. You know, coming off of how we've been playing and especially off of last year where I've had my two best major finishes, that the one way that I'm going to get to that point is by playing well in the majors. And, uh, you know, I feel like this year is a very important year for us, not only in all the events we play, but definitely the majors and the World Golf Championships to go and play some really good golf in those events and, uh, you know, try to get up in that spot. Confidence sometimes gets construed as cockiness. Um, do you care? Do you care if you're taken that way? I know there's a self-confidence and believing in yourself and in your game that some people might, you know, rub them the wrong way. Does that bother you? Not really. Because um, really at the end of the day, you know, I, I know what I believe in and what kind of person I am. And all my friends and the people I get to know, you know, know who the true Patrick Reed is. And, you know, they they would say the complete opposite. They would say, no, he's not cocky at all. You know, he's, he's a great guy. He's, fun to be around and uh, you know he's not on the golf course he's, he's funny even though I, I mean I don't try to be it just kind of happens but um, you know it, it's one of those things that it, it's hard you can't please everybody you know I, you could be really nice and smile all the time and you know some people are going to frown upon you saying oh well they, they're fake because they smile too much and some people are going to have a serious face and they're going to be like oh well you know he look at him he's always angry so really, as long as you're being you, then you know, it doesn't matter what everyone else says. As long as you're being true to yourself and being who you are, that's all you really can control. Very confident at Hazeltine this past fall at the Ryder Cup. Um, what is it about that event that it, it just kind of transforms you into, uh, some have called you an American superhero coming out of the Ryder Cup, but what is it about the Ryder Cup that brings out the best in your game? I think it's just the pride of you know, representing your country. You know, that's, that's our event. That's any player's event. If they could pick an event that they could consistently play, it'd be the Ryder Cup. And anytime I can bring, the, wear the red, white, and blue, it, it's, it's part of me. I mean, it's what I love. And, uh, you know, I'll never forget my first Ryder Cup playing in 2014 with uh, Captain Watson. We had, uh, you know, Wounded Warriors. They came over and they were some of our special guests that week and they gave us all a folded flag. American flag. It's been in every single golf bag that I've ever carried around since that day I got it, and, and it just shows how you know how much uh, my home country means to me. And you know, whenever I get to play for them, I'm going to do it, and I'm going to play as hard as I possibly can. And it just kind of brings everything out of me, especially during Ryder Cup. Got a couple pictures from this past year. I want to get your memories on here. This one is, uh, I believe, this is from Sunday, first hole. Uh, do you remember that and that atmosphere and what that was like for you? I do. Um, this was, it, it was crazy because I, it, you know, I know, I knew with how Rory was playing, that I was going up against their best guy, and I also knew how important it is to get off that first match and you know get a point for your side because that carries the momentum throughout the entire time. And you know, walking over that bridge and walking towards that first tee, the place was going nuts. And that was the first time I actually missed that fairway, unfortunately, but uh, it turned out to be a great day. Obviously, the highlight of the week really was you versus Rory on Sunday. This is on uh, on seven after <laughs> your birdie right there. Yeah. Uh, I mean, explain the passion right there that it's going through you. Yeah, really. Uh, that match with him started on hole one with making the long putt, and you know, just kind of got me fired up. And then he made birdie on three, and he didn't show any emotion, you know, to make that putt because I, I knew he was going to make his. His was ten feet straight up the hills most basic putt and mine being downhill about 12 feet uh, I couldn't go down the match about uh, eight right here this is obviously <laughs> after he dropped a 40 footer on you and you drop one on top of him my, um, ma my matumbo yeah <laughs> not yeah, in my not, house <laughs> <laughs> what, what was that like dropping it on top of him and, and seeing his reaction at that point I mean well you know the one thing I've always been taught in match play is you always have to expect them to pull off the miracle shot. And when he was 90 feet away, however far it was, forever away, I looked at Kessler, I go, he's gonna make this putt. And Kessler just kind of stared at me. He goes, no. It's like, watch, he's gonna make this putt. And he's trying to rationalize with me that, you know, it's uphill going over a ridge, breaking three different ways. He's like, there's no way he's gonna make this putt. 
I was like, he's, he's like, he's probably gonna three putt rather than make it. I go, no, he's gonna make this putt. And I, I, I insisted to, to Kessler that he was gonna make it. And the wall is on its way. Kessler just stares at me because he saw how perfect a speed it was and it was going right in the middle. And he looked at me, he goes, oh, he's like, well, what do you think? I was like, it's just outside left edge, I got it. He's like, okay. So he just kind of stepped away. And when I hit it and I knew it was gonna go in the heart, yeah, I, I had to uh, kind of turn to him and be like, uh-uh, not today. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Ten years from now, who is Patrick Reed then? What does his career look like? What does his life look like? Well, I have gray hair because my daughter will be 12 and a half. <laughs> He'll only be 36, though, man. Come on. I know, but boyfriends and stuff come around, so I'll have gray hair. Um, man, hopefully, you know, hopefully uh, multiple major winner. Um, you know, top player in the world, and uh, just you know, just just to get people to actually know who I really am, and uh, you know, we just started our foundation. Hopefully, that becomes you know really large because we want to help a lot of people out because you know how fortunate we are and how many people help be out on the way. You know, just to give back, I think that's really important, and uh, it's kind of hard to uh, to think that far ahead, especially when I always tell myself. You know, just one day at a time, one day at a time. Now trying to think 10 years ahead is uh, it's difficult. It seems important to you. It's it, getting the sense that it seems important that you want people to know who you truly are. Uh, yeah, it, it's very important to me because um, I feel like I've been painted completely different than who I really am just because of my top five comment. Um, you know, uh, and that that's the sad thing is you know, media can either make you or break you. And, uh, you know, it's never gonna break me because uh, I, you know, I mentally feel like I can, I can handle really anything in the, in the media. But it can paint a picture of, of, you know, a false, a false picture of who you are. And I feel like that's, that has happened. And uh, there's so many times I play in these pro-ams, these Wednesday pro-ams, and you know, I'm interacting with guys and, you know, I'm helping them out and we're having such a great time and they're like, man, I've never had a better experience in a pro-am than I have playing with you and I've played in 10 of these, I've played in five of these, I've played in three of these. But, but I mean, I'm out there just having a good time and just being me and you know, they're able to see that. And they're actually being able to paint their own picture of who I really am rather than what they read.